Are you a pregnant mother or a mother thinking about nutrition and wondering what they should be feeding their babies or themselves um, in the first couple of years of life? This mini episode, we're talking all about the nutritional importance in the first 1,000 days, and today we're going to focus on choline. So let's jump right in. Welcome to the Beehive Doc Talks with Dr. Blair Rolnick. As a pediatrician and mother herself, Dr. Rolnick is here to answer your most pressing parenting questions and guide you through the tough spots. Welcome back to Be Kind Pediatrics. For those of you who are new to the show, my name is Dr. Blair Rolnick. I'm a board certified pediatrician and mom myself. So I've started a little mini series on the importance of nutrition in the first 1,000 days of life. And this is a topic I'm super excited about as both a mother and a pediatrician. Um, and I hope you guys really enjoy it. So last week we talked about the role of DHA and why it's so important. Today, we're going to focus on a micronutrient called choline. So I just want to recap the previous discussion about why I'm talking about this in the first 1000 days with my patients, starting, um, ideally from when I meet the mom, which usually starts, you know, our care here again, starts in the second and third trimester. But if I could, I would tell mommies when they're planning or thinking about getting pregnant. And the reason for that is, Again, in the first 1,000 days of life, babies' brains are undergoing rapid development, and that starts from day zero. So day, by day 16, a baby has completely formed their neural tube, which is going to be the backbone of their whole central nervous system. So by 16 days, they're done with that, which I think is just amazing. Um, but really, rapid development occurs in the prefrontal cortex and your central nervous system for a child under two, and they really need the fuel and building blocks to build their central nervous system during this time. So we know children who are deprived of adequate nutrition during this time are at risk for not having, um, for having poor neurocognitive outcomes, behavioral outcomes, as well as neurosensory outcomes. So things like their vision. I wanted to take a deeper dive into what that really means, optimal nutrition in the first thousand days. And we're going to go micronutrient by micronutrient. So today we're talking about choline. So what is the role of choline in brain development? So choline is really crucial, uh, component of something called acetylcholine. Acetylcholine is a neurotransmitter. So that is a molecule that transmits information from one neuron to the next. And neurons are the building block of your nervous system and brain. So acetylcholine is really important is a neurotransmitter in memory, learning, cognition, um, and you really need adequate choline levels to support these proper cognitive functions. The other crucial role that choline plays a part in is um, and making phospholipids, which are really essential components of the cell membrane. Um, and so that cell membrane helps support the integrity of the cell itself and is important for overall healthy cell function and the, and the lifespan of the cell as well as communication. So again, choline is not just important for newborn mommies and infants and children, but it's actually a vital micronutrient all the way through your life to help support your um, nervous system cells. Another really important thing that choline does is it contributes to the formation um, and maintenance of myelin. So myelin is kind of this protective sheath that surrounds our nerves and keeps our nerves safe. Proper myelination is really crucial for both the development of the nervous system and then effective um, nerve signaling transmission throughout our lives. So it really impacts our motor skills and our overall neurocognitive function. So again, really important, not just for newborns, but all the way through your life. The last thing that choline does, which is kind of interesting, is not um, about the brain, but is actually about the liver, is choline is involved in lipid metabolism. So it helps the liver transport fats in and out of the liver. Um, and it can help the liver by preventing an accumulation of fats in the liver, which will, can otherwise lead to liver damage and fatty liver disease. So again, choline is a super important micronutrient for your brain, but also your liver health, particularly if you are struggling with dyslipidemia, you might really want to think about making sure that you're getting enough choline in your diet. So we talked all about the importance of choline. What are some good sources for choline, especially in those early years? So again, um, as we talked about with DHA, for infants and newborns, the best source of choline is going to be in breast milk and infant formula. So it's important for breastfeeding moms to make sure that they are getting enough choline so that that choline is being transmitted in the breast milk to meet their infant's needs. Um, for formula, most formulas, again, are fortified with choline, or all formulas, I should say, are fortified with choline to meet the nutritional requirements of a formula-fed infant. Once your child is transitioning from breast milk or formula to solid foods, 
you want to make sure they continue to have adequate choline in their food. So what are some choline rich foods? Um, eggs are a big one, especially egg yolks are particularly high in choline. Meats, um, specifically lean meats like chicken and lean beef can provide a nice source of choline. Um, fish also are great sources of choline. So to kind of go back to that heavy metal talk, Again, this is one of the areas where fish is a really important part of our nutrition and shouldn't be eliminated from the diet necessarily. If you are a vegan, there are certainly plant-based options and sources of choline. So you can get choline from beans and peas, as well as those cretaceous vegetables, so things like broccoli and Brussels sprouts. So how much choline is enough choline? So the adequate intake for choline um, for children zero to six months is about 125 milligrams a day. Um, and for children seven to 12 months, it goes up to 150 milligrams per day. Um, so most parents, I tell them to not focus on how much exactly their child is getting, but instead to focus on a robust diet that is meeting their nutritional needs by either making sure that if they're breastfeeding, that mommy's nutrition is optimal and she's meeting her nutritional needs, um, or if they're past um, formula and breastfeeding and they're onto solids, that they are getting a diet that is um, varied and robust and contains at least one of these sources, either lean meats, eggs, um, vegetables, or beans and peas. If there's any concern for a choline deficiency or that your child is not getting enough choline, again, this is a great time to reach out um, to talk to your pediatrician about their overall nutrition. Your pediatrician may recommend that your family gets in touch with a registered dietitian um, so that you have more personalized recommendations to meet your infant's specific needs. So I hope that you found today's episode helpful and interesting. This is a, a favorite topic of mine. Next week's episode, we're going to continue to move on to other micronutrients that um, have been identified as being vital in the first 1,000 days. I hope you guys really enjoyed this mini series. If you have any questions or comments, of course, please leave them below. Thank you for watching the Beehive Doc Talks with Dr. Blair Rolnick. For more episodes and her practice, visit BeKindPediatrics.com and don't forget to subscribe for more parenting tips wherever you get your podcasts. This information is for educational purposes only. It is not medical advice. Always seek medical advice from a qualified physician.